Food isn't complicated. You eat it, you enjoy it, you don't die. And for most people, that's about as complex as it gets. Nutrition, on the other hand, can be a bit complicated. The study of what food does to your body beyond just fueling it is actually a fairly young science in the grand scheme of things, as we've only had the right technology to identify and interpret what really causes what in the food we eat for about the last hundred years, and said technology is only getting more sophisticated every day. So I think it's fair to say that over the years, nutrition has had its fair share of controversies because, as terrible as this sounds, we don't yet have all the answers. That's not to say we don't have a lot of the answers, but who remembers when fats were public enemy number one? And then it was carbohydrates, and then it was sugars, and then we came to find out that it's really not that black and white. Today I'm starting a series addressing the things that we do know for sure not only have a negative impact on health, but a truly detrimental one. The things that you encounter on a day-to-day -day basis that you didn't even know about, or at the very least didn't know just how bad they were. It's time we discuss the real killers. Added sugars are like the poster child for the phrase, we create our own demons. Now, sugars is a term referring to a broad category of all monosaccharides and disaccharides, the simplest form of carbohydrates. However, the FDA defines added sugars as sugars that are added during the processing of food, including from cane or beets, from syrups or honey, and from fruits or vegetables that are in excess of what would be expected of the same volume of 100% fruit or vegetable juice. All things considered, a fairly simple definition. These include, but are not limited to, white granulated sugar, brown sugar, coconut sugar, glucose, fructose, lactose, maltose, sucrose, dextrose, honey, maple syrup, molasses, corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup, nectar, fruit concentrate, etc. Basically, anytime you see any of these on an ingredients list, it's just another way for them to say sugar. Now let me get one thing straight. All carbohydrates eventually break down into glucose, the most basic form of sugar before entering the bloodstream anyway. I'd go as far as to say you need sugar. It's our primary source of energy, especially for higher intensity exercise. But added sugars are different. Added sugars are a man-made abomination that only exists because we could not control our urges, our sweet tooth. That addicting little feeling you get when you consume sugar and then crash an hour later but you're still like, you know what, I'm gonna do it again. That funny little feeling is responsible for more death in the modern era than any war, smoking, alcohol, you name it, and it's just getting worse. And it just leaves me wondering, how did we get to this point? Well, let me explain. The first chemically refined sugars were discovered in Southeast Asia about 2,500 years ago. It then spread east toward China and west toward Persia. In the 7th century, China developed its more efficient sugarcane techniques, and by the 13th century, these techniques reached the Mediterranean. Not long after, Cyprus and Sicily became the centers of sugar production in the Western world, though funnily enough, throughout the Middle Ages, sugar was a rare and expensive spice. It wasn't until the Portuguese started using sugar plantations to their fullest potential in Brazil, and this labor soon expanded to the Caribbean. While sugar has been around forever, mass demand and consumption in the mid-17th century is where we really start to see the health risks we associate with sugars today. In 1747, German chemist Andreas Margraff discovered sucrose in beetroots, the same sugar you'd find in sugarcane, which became another major source for added sugars. By the mid-1700s, sugar was estimated to be 20% of all European imports. Over the next couple hundred years, sugar became a more popular spice, being included in several dishes that they they weren't before. Caning methods became more efficient and sugar became a more competitive market, but for the most part, things were still generally under control. That is until the 1970s when a new challenger reared its ugly head, corn. More specifically, high fructose corn syrup. With corn subsidized by the government, this stuff was everywhere and manufacturers were really starting to figure out how much they were able to get away with. They used cane sugar and beet sugar and most importantly, corn syrup. And you know the thing that they have in common? They're cheap. But not just that, they're addicting and they are in everything. Here in the 21st century, sugar is estimated to be responsible for about 20% of calories in modern Western diets. In 1990, the FDA mandated all manufacturers were required to make consistent, standardized nutrition fact labels on all food or drink products with the intent of being sold. However, it wasn't until 2020 that they had to include added sugars on the label, finally giving everyday people the chance to fight back. So you might be thinking, yeah, that's all great, but you haven't actually told us what sugars do. Well, sugar is mainly used as a fuel source. It's the body's go-to choice for quick energy, making it great for anaerobic exercise. 
When you consume sugars, your pancreas releases a hormone called insulin, which helps you use and store glucose so sugar has somewhere to go. Whatever glucose you don't use first gets stored in the liver and the muscles, and the remaining glucose ends up being stored in fat cells. Sugars in excess can cause the cells to not respond as well to insulin, known as insulin resistance. This can cause a cascade of failures and inefficiencies in those systems that may lead to obesity or type 2 diabetes. But it doesn't stop there. Several studies have also linked added sugars to a greater risk of dying from heart disease, high blood pressure, chronic inflammation, loss of appetite control, an increased risk of depression, acceleration of cognitive decline, potential for fatty liver disease, a negative impact on dental health, and acne, and nobody wants that. Unlike almost every other nutrient you'll come across in a normal day's meal plan, added sugars really don't have anything to contribute, and that's why they're often considered empty calories. Your body doesn't really seem to know what to do with them, and in excess, this can cause a domino effect that can inhibit several organs and bodily systems from doing their jobs. All around, it's just a mess what it does to your body physically. But there is one other component that I want to mention, and that's the psychological effects of sugar. When consumed, sugar releases a chemical called dopamine, which controls pleasure. This is what makes you crave sugar so much, causing an addiction-like feeling. In fact, studies have demonstrated that the effects of quote-unquote sugar addiction, withdrawal, and relapse are eerily similar to the victims of drug abuse. And this can result in a vicious cycle that can really lead to a lot of people not only losing control of their weights, but their entire lives. So that sounded pretty unfortunate, but now the question you're all probably asking is why added sugars? Why don't all sugars do this? And the short answer is, they do. At the end of the day, sugar is sugar, regardless of if it's natural or added. Once it reaches the bloodstream, it all functions generally the same. The problem with added sugars is that they're fast. They metabolize and enter the bloodstream so much quicker than natural sugars, which come with other beneficial nutrients like protein, fats, and fibers. These other nutrients form more complex structures that take longer to break down and thus enter the bloodstream at a slower rate, so they have less of an impact on blood glucose levels, opting to provide longer periods of energy as opposed to the sugar rush and crash. The fructose you'll find in fruit is complemented with a ratio of fibers and certain micronutrients that are conducive to slower digestion when you compare it to the fructose in candy. The same goes for the sugar you'll find in milk, being supplemented with a proper ratio of proteins and fats when compared to something like ice cream. Ice cream does contain a good amount of the positives that milk does, it's just so overwhelmed with sugars in comparison that that's what has the primary impact on your body. The higher concentration of other nutrients is also more likely to stimulate feelings of satiety or fullness, so you're less likely to want more sugars, something that the added sugars just don't do. While theoretically you can consume too much natural sugars from foods like dairy, fruits, beets, corn, and legumes, it's pretty tough to do so due to those feelings of satiety. So by now I hope I've convinced you that there is a pretty drastic difference between the two, natural and added sugars. So the question now becomes, where do you find these added sugars? Well, everywhere. Candies, cookies, cakes and other baked goods, icing, table sugar, syrup, ice cream, soda, condiments. The thing is, these are places that you'd expect to find them, and thus I think most people are going to be pretty aware of how much they're consuming. In my opinion, it's when you consume them and don't know it that's the real problem. When your quote-unquote healthy foods have just as much sugar as your quote-unquote junk foods and you don't know it. That's when the real trouble ensues. It's the whole, an open enemy is better than a false friend quote in action. Companies have slowly but surely been adding sugar to the foods you wouldn't think would have any over the years. And I'd be willing to bet most people get more sugar from these than the foods you'd actually expect them in. Yogurt, cereal, fruit juices, sports drinks, energy drinks, spaghetti sauce, granola, baked beans, chocolate milk, prepackaged oatmeal, flavored coffee, Iced tea, pre-made soup, cereal bars, canned fruit, dried fruit, smoothies, cinnamon sugar, nut butters, bread, and the one that bothers me the most, protein shakes and bars. Obviously, not all of these are created equally, but if you eat or drink any of these regularly, I encourage you to check the label next time you go to the store. It may be as simple as just switching brands or buying the raw materials and putting it together yourself, but some of these are just, in general, better left on the shelf. So are there any exceptions to all of this? Is there anything that added sugars could offer that could be of any merit? No. You get nothing. You lose. Well, that was easy. Actually, there is one thing that I'd be remiss not to mention, and I feel it needs to be said very delicately. 
From a nutritional perspective, and as it strictly pertains to your physical health, Gene Wilder is 100% right. Added sugars are useless. They're empty calories and are only going to be a detriment to your body. However, there have been several takes on a perfect diet and the sacrifices that come with it. Time and time again, we see the psychological effects of outright omitting eating things you enjoy, and how maintaining a perfect diet for most people is not only impractical, but also miserable, and significantly increases the odds of you just giving up entirely. Is that batch of cookies that your neighbor brought over, or the cake at your best friend's wedding going to kill you? I doubt it. Is it going to start you down a hopeless downward spiral of sugar addiction that eventually results in your premature demise? I'd love to say no, but we got here somehow. Obviously, discipline is required, but if doing the right thing comes at the cost of a healthy relationship with food, well, that's a decision you're going to have to make. If you enjoyed the video, or at the very least learned something, I encourage you to subscribe and let me know if you do like this format of delivery. And just remember to advocate for your body. You only get the one.